and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. I didn't feel like a mighty man of valor. Matter of fact, the Midianites were horrible people. They had scared us. They had reduced us to cowards. And we'd gone and we'd, we'd actually made dens in the caves and began to hide in the cleft of the rocks. They were as thick as grasshoppers, spread out across the land. And fear ran through us. And some shame and some, some doubt and some unbelief. I didn't feel like that mighty man that God had called me to be. Sometimes I'm thrilled to death that God sees the final product and not the current situation. And I said unto him, O oh my Lord, you can read with me if you like. I'm in Judges chapter 6. You can open up your Bibles to Judges chapter 6. And I said unto him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, when then, why then is all this befalling us? And where be all his miracles which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon me and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent thee? Well, God says that to all of us at some time in our life, at one time or another. God has commissioned all of us. If he's called you out of the darkness in his marvelous light, it's for a purpose in your life. Many people never see the destiny that God has called them into. And a lot of times they live low lives. They don't have dreams and they don't have visions. And I said unto him, O oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least of my father's house. You don't have an excuse big enough for God. You can come up with any excuse you want, but if you'll just humbly submit yourself to God, God will raise you up and God will begin to use you. I thought I could talk my way out of it right here. After all, I was a coward. I was hiding. I didn't, I didn't want the Midianites to find me as I was grinding away wheat in the wine press. And so I had to ask him, how shall I save Israel? How, Lord? My family's poor, man. The Midianites have driven us to the poorhouse. They've taken away our strength. And the Lord said unto me, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. You know, that day I began to realize one man with God is a majority. I began to understand what the old prophets had said when they said, If God be for us, who can be against us? I began to realize some of God's promises. And I said unto him, If I now, if now I have found grace in thy sight, then show me a sign that thou talkest with me. Anybody ever else done that? Hey, am I the only one that's asked, you know, ask God for a sign? God, if this is, if this is really you, then, 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 then give me a sign. I don't think I'm the only one that's ever done that. Any of us that have ever had a conversation with God at some point or another have said that. God, if this is you, then give me a sign. And I said... God began to speak to me, began to talk with me. And I told him, depart not hence, I pray thee, until I come unto thee and bring forth my present and set it before thee. And he said, I will tarry till thou come again. And I went in and made ready a kid of un and unleavened cakes and an ephah of flour. The flesh I put in a basket and I put, forth, uh, put the broth in a pot and brought it out unto him under the oak and presented it. And the angel of God said unto me, take the flesh and the unleavened cakes, and lay them upon this rock, and pour out the broth, and I did so. Then the angel of the Lord put forth the end of the staff that was in his hand, and touched the flesh and the unleavened cakes, and there rose up fire off the rock, and consumed, and, 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 and touched the flesh and the unleavened cakes, and there rose up fire out of the rock, and consumed the flesh and the unleavened cakes. Then the angel of the Lord departed out of my sight. I thought that, that surely that's enough. Surely God hears you a sacrifice and you've accepted it and the fire has come up and it should be pleasing unto you. And I didn't realize how immature I really was at this point because I wasn't done. That wasn't the sign that I was looking for. For some of the older men, that might have been sufficient. 
but I still had a poor self-image of who I was. And I really didn't even believe at this point that God could use me. Anybody else feel like that ever? And when I perceived that he was an angel of the Lord, I said, alas, O Lord God, for because I have seen an angel of the Lord face to face, and the Lord said unto me, peace be unto thee. Fear not, thou shalt not die. I remember stories of old where angels of God showed up, and and it would wipe out entire nations. I couldn't help but fear and tremble as I stood in the presence of this angel. Then I built an altar there unto the Lord and called it Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace. Unto this day, it is yet in Oprah of the Abyssalites. And it came to pass that same night, or the same night, that the Lord said unto me, Take thy father's young bullock, even the second bullock of seven years old, and throw down the altar of Baal that thy father hath, and cut down the grove that is by it. Not only did God call me, but God called me to make a righteous stance. This was one of the toughest things I'd ever had to do. We were taught to honor our mother and our father. And now God wants me to go tear down his altars. And I'm thinking at this point, God, are you sure you got the right guy? You want me to cut down his altar, tear down his altars and cut down the groves? And you want me to build an altar unto the Lord thy God upon the top of this rock? In the ordered place and take the second bullock and offer a burnt sacrifice with the wood in the grove which thou shalt cut down? I wasn't brave enough to do it by myself. So I took 10 men, took 10 of my servants, and did as the Lord has said unto me. And so it was because I feared my father's household and the men of the city that that I could not do it by day. I did it by night. God had called me. God had empowered me. God had blessed me. God had given me orders, and I still really wasn't ready to march. Wasn't ready to come against those altars that our family had set up. There was all those altars that had literally put a curse on our family. Generation after generation after generation. You know, God sent the Midianites upon us because of our disobedience. We weren't obedient when we went in and possessed the land. And, and, and God told us, if, if you don't destroy everything, you'll end up worshiping their gods. A lot like the nation we live in today. 